When Joe first got to Rawhide, uh, I think of the word chill. He came in with pink hair and black hair, and he just had his own vibe about him. I was low key, I was scared the whole time because like I'm in a different environment, you know, I'm out in the woods when I'm used to like tall buildings in front of me made of glass and concrete. And how quiet it was in the nighttime, I was, I felt out of place. There was a part of me that felt that I didn't belong here. And then there was that part of me that said, you do belong here, you need to be here. This is good for you. He came in open-minded. He was very honest with me about the things he wanted to work on self-confidence, his body image, his relationship with his dad. I was trying to be as committed as possible, just trying to get everything I can out of my residential program. And that's what led me to be so successful in my transitioning. So I've seen Joe be consistent and to be disciplined. He quickly became Wrangler, which is one of our higher ranking statuses at our home. And that opened up an opportunity for him to go to the group home. He was the quickest kid I've ever worked with going from residential to group home. And that is a testament to his work ethic and his ability to trust the adults in his life and what we were saying was for his benefit. I wouldn't have made it so far without my staff, especially Mr. Ryan. So, okay, this was my first day. So I think it was like bedtime or something. We were just going to lay down and go to sleep for the next day. And he comes in my room and he sits down on my bed and he's asking me like, what's life like for you? And I'm just like, I slowly opened up because like, I don't know, I, I wanted to try. And he started crying with me and that's when I was like, okay, if you can cry with me, then I can trust you, you know? And I think that's why we saw the quick development that we saw in Joe was his willingness to be vulnerable, his willingness to speak truth, and his willingness to just accept and trust the people around him. Joe, I'd like to thank you for just the maturity that you brought into our home at a much needed time. You were in many ways like another adult in the room by the way you carried yourself. And I think that positivity and that maturity had ripples effect through a lot of other kids' treatment. And uh, just know that you helped other kids while helping yourself and that's something to be proud of. How I felt about myself before Rawhide was I wasn't very fond of myself per se. If I was to die and never live my life to its fullest, I wouldn't have had any complaints. I was ready to let go. But now, I'm very grateful that I'm still alive. I'm very grateful that I never let go and that I'm still here and that people care about me. If I didn't come to Rawhide, where would I be? I definitely do think about this question all the time. I would be dead if I didn't come to Rawhide when I did either by my own hand or by someone else's. I was, I was in a messy situation and Rawhide saved me and saved my life. So Joe, I don't know when your time is gonna be, um, but I would say that I'm proud of you and that I love you, kid. And I'm gonna miss dapping you up and giving you hugs when I come over to the group home. I want you to continue to seek your confidence and find your confidence in who you are as a young man and continue to be yourself. Don't let people put you into a box because God made you a very specific and special way for a specific and special purpose. And I hope that you take that home with you, Joe. And I hope you continue to be there for your family, love your family and support your family, and also look out for your best interests as well.